Okay, so uh, I've got my pieces glued together and waiting for me. This is my uh, plane directions from the beginning. There's my four pieces. This is what the plane looks like at the end. We already did this page where we measured and cut with our pencil until we had those pieces. Um, I sort of just winged it from that point on, but in the instructions here, it shows you how to stack these pieces up and tape them and put your name on them. Wipe off any extra glue with a wet paper towel, masking tape them together. I think over here says something about putting a piece of wax paper on top of them and putting a thick book on them until the glue dries, which is usually overnight. Okay. And we're not ready to quite block sand the wing yet because that's not dry. But what we need are these guys here. These pieces here come out of this rectangle. If you can believe that. All right. So if we turn to this page here, oh my God, look at all those numbers. Oh, that's confusing. Math makes my head hurt. All right. But let's not panic. If this from here to here or the bottom here to here is four inches. Well, what's half of four? Well, that's pretty easy. Two. So I know this line here looks like it's right in the middle. So let's make that two inches. Let's make a mark at two right there. Okay. And again, if I look at it, I know it's not exactly the same size, but yeah, that, that kind of looks like it's in the middle. Kind of looks like that there. Okay. And this shows me that there's a line going down one inch from that point. Okay. So if I kind of use my edge of my ruler against there to make sure I'm doing it nice and straight and draw down one inch. Now, I'm not trying to go through my ball so yet. I'm just drawing a nice line that I can see. Okay. So there's a one inch long line, just like it did there. Now, this guy here from here to here is two inches or from the bottom corner to here, from here to here is one inch. So maybe I'll do that. One is easier to me to get to than two. So there's one inch or from zero to one inch, right? Make a mark. Could do it on this side. Go from zero. No, oh, you can't see that. Hold on. Let me move it in front of the camera. Zero to one inch there. Make a little mark. And now, just like up here, I'm going to connect from that to that. I'll use my ruler to connect from there to there. Remember, two points of contact. Use two fingers instead of just one. So I'm going to draw myself a nice line. Guys, this is a little tricky. I'm not going to lie to you. But again, that kind of looks like that, doesn't it? And if I do it on this side, I don't even need to see the numbers on the ruler. That kind of looks like that there. And this leftover piece on the bottom that's kind of got this point on it here kind of looks like that. Which, oh, by the way, kind of looks like the tail of my plane. We call this the tail wing. Sometimes we call it the elevator. Okay. Because it's the part that makes the plane go up and down. So that's pretty close. Oh, and, and look at this. This piece here. And these pieces here. I guess that's a little more accurate way of doing it. So you can kind of see there's my rudder. And here's my... I actually end up with two of these guys. I only need one for my plane. Okay, as you can kind of see in the example here. Once I've done that, you might think, all right, well, Mr. Pat, go ahead and take your pencil and just draw through those lines a bunch more times and it'll cut. 
I could do that, guys, but it's probably not going to work as well. These lines that run in the wood, these different colored brown lines you see here, we call that wood grain. And that's sort of the direction that the wood grew. And when you're cutting with the grain, like I did when I did the uh, wing, I was making my lines in the same direction as those lines in the wood. And it naturally just cuts a little easier. Going across it is not as easy a thing. So I'm going to use a special tool called a balsa saw. Now, a balsa saw is not sharp like a razor blade. If I get it up close to the camera, you can kind of see there's a little tiny teeth on it. Kind of like a steak knife or something, right? We call that being serrated. All right. So if I go down here, I'm going to move my directions out of the way. I don't want to cut those up. And just like with the pencil, though, I'm not going to do it all in one pass. That's three, four, each time I'm going a little deeper, five. You know, that first pencil mark gave me kind of a little uh, ditch or a channel or whatever, a little little valley that my balsa saw went into. Um, I want to be careful I don't scratch my, my table up. Um, there's a couple of tables where we do some cutting specifically because we know those tables are going to get a little more wrecked than the others. But ask your teacher where they want you to use the balsa saw. Then look, if I turn it over, you can see I've cut through right up to that one inch mark. Okay, and that's good from there to there. So now I got to go from here to here. And I mean, I suppose I can kind of use it more like a saw. I want to get right up to there. Ooh, look at that. Came right off, huh? Very nice. And again, that's pretty darn close to this guy here. All right, cut the other one. Lay my saw right across there. Ta-da. Oh my goodness. That fits right over that, doesn't it? Or darn close. Sweet. So I've got these pieces. Label them. Now, as far as these fins go, or these rudders, you only need one. So I'm going to pick this one. I think it came out nicer. This one's sort of got this little extra line here. Looks a little ugly to me. Uh, that can just be thrown out, or I can save it as an extra if something ever happens to that. I could probably even take some sandpaper and maybe sand this edge and smooth that out, make that a little neater looking. Uh, you know, again, neatness is a good portion of your grade. But this is effectively what I need to build my bottom of my plane okay between these two guys i don't want to lose them sometimes what i'll do is i'll take a piece of tape and just bundle them together with a piece of tape before i stick them in the period drawer uh, for uh, safekeeping but again this name and period number is super important for you to not lose these pieces and have them get thrown out in the garbage all right so hopefully our piece will be dry and i'll be able to show you how we turn that piece we those three pieces we glued together into uh, that wing shape and in fact if I get it right here in front of the camera you can kind of see that that wing looks kind of like a teardrop on its side it's kind of fat and round in the front and it gets skinnier toward the end that's a very special shape that we call an airfoil I don't know why I don't know who named it okay but that's what we're looking for is that kind of roundish shape that tapers towards and gets skinnier toward the back all right so that will be the next part of this uh, demo video and then getting all those pieces into a plane like this there's a few tricks that i've learned along the way for making sure that your wing goes on straight and isn't crooked and uh that this uh fin doesn't droop over so uh, i will uh have a additional video once all the pieces are made on how to put this guy together correctly all right but you're already a good portion of the way to the finish line on making this balsa plane